Hello, hello. Today we're going to go over grind spots from the low end to the top end and just kind of go over everything that's relevant, sort of just refresher content just to make sure everybody knows what's relevant and what's not relevant, put you guys in the right direction to making some decent money per hour. To put things into perspective, we're going to start with like the gear score looking like entry level to Vala gear all the way up to, you know, soft cap, not necessarily soft cap, but like kind of getting to that mid tier player where you've got some AP and some DP, but not exactly anything impressive to where you're what I would consider soft cap where you have at least you know 370 DP with Kudum of course and some black stars and some accessories that are somewhat you know impressive that will put you at an AP bracket where you can grind just about everywhere comfortably so we're going to start from the bottom here and we're going to talk about Polly's Forest I think this spot's incredible I think it's actually one of the well, one of the greatest grind spots in the game from a low level standpoint because it's easily 300 mil an hour and that's the best part is that you know you could be this gear score right here like mind you I, I'm like a super day one player from way back in the day and back then making like 30 mil an hour was massive like 30 mil was huge back in the day now like at a place like Polly's which this place used to make nothing you like this place was absolutely horrible for money back in the day or at least at the time it was really bad right because there was just so many other spots that just well there wasn't even so many there was just like a few spots that made good money and Polly's was not one of them this was a skill point spot and it still is mind you you still need to grind the spot for skill points but 300 mil an hour you you three years ago this spot barely made like 60 it was horrible I don't even think it was 60 it was probably less than that it's like 20 mil an hour probably but anyway yeah if you're super low level I'm talking like Tuvala entry level garbage this is the spot for you you need to grind here for skill points you need to grind here for this money all right 300 mil an hour is gas so just just sit here for a few hours and do that weekly and you'll be on your way to getting some serious gains after a few more hours moving on up to miramak ruins aka trees this is a really good group grind spot you don't necessarily need a group anymore to grind here it's uh, you know kind of a solo spot nowadays but if you want to grind with friends trees is totally good it's completely viable it's about 400 mil an hour if you can get some decent drops with the voltara i will say the prices are a bit scuffed right now i think a voltara is selling for about 80 million right now so the the, the numbers here are a little iffy because these are pc plugins probably so you know you the, the the number here is a bit scuffed so just keep that in mind that accessories are different on console from pc and i'm a console player so when i look at this this is a little bit more money for us because our accessories are a bit more pricey but overall 400 mil an hour is pretty nice and not to mention this is a serious xp spot so if you're like level 59 per se and you want to reach level 60 61 62 miramak ruins is the like arguably the best spot to do this at because not only do you make a good a good amount of money but the xp here is really really good i myself grinded to 62 on multiple characters at trees and if you're on seasons, you get that experience bonus um, from being on seasonal servers, you know, dogpiling a bunch of experience buffs on buffs and Miramak Ruins will take you to like whatever level you really want to be. If you want to push for 63, honestly, just Miramak Ruins is the way to do it. Moving on to some honorable mention spots that are kind of just out of nowhere. Fodus Habitat is actually not that bad. I've actually grinded here multiple times just for the sake of like testing how good it can be. And yeah, it's not bad. It's not the it's not the great it's not the best thing in the world but if you're like man polly's is crowded or something like that vada's habitat can hook you up it is also i believe a skill point area as well so you can actually grind and make some decent money here as well as also get some experience and it is overall a pretty good grind spot in general so that's just something as an honorable mention now let's talk about some obscure kind of like lucrative grind spots Pilaku Jail is really good, but not for the reasons that you probably think, right? As a new player, you're probably just looking at, you know, trash loot, Kafras, things of the obvious, right? But these scroll written in an ancient language are actually huge when it comes to making money, right? Because these scrolls will give you memory fragments. And the important thing to note about memory fragments is that currently right now, they're in high demand. They're kind of slowly getting like staggered down a little bit, but for the most part they're still selling for about three mil a pop and at this point you can make a, sh a shit ton of money with these scroll written in ancient language if you come over to this website veliain.com scrolls you can actually calculate how much money you would be making per like you know scrolls right so if you come to this timer here right let's just say you know you you, you like like let's see so so right here in this 
where it says infinity you can put a number here right so let's say 60 seconds so this is the timer right so scroll clear time 60 seconds so it, it would take you 300 scrolls to make 1.2 billion silver so every 300 scrolls you would be able to be making this much extra money so you could sit at pilaku jail until you had 300 of these bad boys and then boom you run them and then now you have an extra 1.2 bill obviously you know time factor here you know that's going to take you some time to rack that up but over you know you'll get there if you grind consistently like you could get 300 scrolls easily in a week don't sleep on pila Coup jail it, it's definitely a decent spot but you have to really think about it from a lucrative standpoint and run these scrolls because these scrolls definitely will boost your money uh, by a lot another sleeper spot is Akman temple this is one of my most favorite grind spots because it's so peaceful nobody ever goes here because everyone thinks it's dog shit but it's not it's actually not that bad especially for an entry level player you could easily grind here and make a decent chunk of change so this is an aggro spot it was recently not even recently it was like reworked last year and it was um the aggress efficiency was tweaked so now you can actually run aggress here and it only takes like maybe 10 15k an hour and you can make upwards of like four to five hundred mil an hour and again these accessory prices are scuffed um on console a tongue red earring is currently selling for about 110 million silver so you could probably adjust this number to more or less 550 million silver an hour that's probably safe to assume not to mention if you take a look here look you get scrolls you also get scrolls here which that will again turn into even more money because of the memory fragments and you're making about 24 kafras an hour which you're going to be saving as a new player because kafras are super high in demand right now and selling them is a throw never sell your kafras always hoard them because you're going to need them later and when you do sell them you're going to regret it because you will get to a point in the game where you're going to wish you still had those kafras that you sold but anyway yeah Achman, super slept on i i love this place it's really really good I don't grind it anymore, but it's if I was still around the older gear score that I used to have, I would still be living here to this day because it is a absolutely fi fire spot. All right, so graduating to the king of low end grind spots, Centaur's Herd. Now, this spot is questionable in why it exists to be the way that it does, but you only need like 200 and like 200 something ap like you zero ap to grind here it's it's negative ap you could grind here off of seasonals and it'd be fine and essentially this spot's attraction is 90 percent of the income is a, not even like a 71 percent of the income is from the uh the, the the actual trash loot and that's what's cool about this spot is you don't have to rely on a drop you don't have to rely on anything you just have to be able to pull the highest amount of trash loot that you physically can now this is an aggress spot so obviously you want to be running yellow aggress here so that way you can pull as much as possible and if you happen to have like a aggress coin which even arguably is the best thing to have because you can pop these two and even double your trash loot so look at that 767 mil with aggress aggress coin and a yellow loot scroll nuts but some people may not have agris um coins so we'll just stick with just regular agris but yeah i mean 23 kafras 16 bmcs which these are mad important nowadays bmcs are in high demand um, as they've ever been so these are actually you know 16 an hour is pretty pretty good not to mention this place also drops scrolls which again you can turn into some decent money later on overall centaurs is the king of low-end grinding if you have zero gear score and you want to just make a a, a a lot of money just come to centaurs and i do want to mention that it is very important that you play a class that can move really really fast and clear fast succession berserker is the best grinder here hands down is the best grinder here if you are playing another class just tag a a suck berserker if you plan to live at centaurs just tag a suck berserker and you will just be grinding here like a like a like a chimp it's so easy that how how suck berserker can just clear this place like a like a mad like a mad tractor bro he's just zooming just mowing these mobs down like it's nothing this spot is all about speed efficiency and just kind of mastering the rotation to where you're just getting to everything at a quick manner and berserker does it the best no other class can compete with berserker on god okay graduating to more uh interesting spots that require kind of like a little bit of luck here so star's end i've uh, expressed my distaste for this spot and the reason I've, i i hate this spot is because it is entirely based around rng because if you take a look here the trash loot is is dust like if you run a blue loot scroll here 
the average loot is 5.3k trash. If you have a little bit of gear score like 281 Kudum, Black Star, you could probably push that to about 6.5k if you're good and know how to master the rotation and your character and pulling mechanics. But other than that, the, the trash loot is negligible at best. Even if you run a yellow loot scroll, I mean, we're talking at like a 30 mil increase. Like that is dust. Like that is next to nothing. So what makes this spot great if when you do happen to get, get the drop is the black distortion earring. Currently on console, they are sold the hell out because nobody grinds a star's end. Like barely anybody grinds it because it's just not worth it. It's very inconsistent money and not a lot of people are interested in gambling with their time so black disto earrings are just kind of you know they're cool uh, when you do get one it's a lot of money but 440 mil an hour you could go to polys and you make like barely 100 mil less why would you ever grind star's end and waste your time on grinding accessories when you could go somewhere else and just you know, to just buy, to just buy a, a distortion earring. You know what I mean? One hour of polys and you could buy a black distortion earring. You know what I mean? I think PA needs to kind of take that into consideration is that, you know, you, you could go to Star's End and just get the drop. Why would I go and do that when I could do an hour of polys and just put in a pre-order and then just buy one? Just doesn't make a lot of, you know, it doesn't make sense. It, the spot needs a buff. It needs to have the trash loot change to where it's actually viable and the black distortion earring will actually be able to up the trash loot or uh, up the money per hour by a lot because this spot is dust. Nobody wants to grind this place anymore. The only reason I'm mentioning it is because like it, it is a pretty it's still a pretty good grind spot. And if you're one of those people that do get lucky, which it does happen quite often, you could pull two distos in an hour and you're upwards, you know, you're making like 900 mil. Uh, if you're lucky enough with the Kaffir drops and getting a couple of distos, you could easily make a bill an hour here. If again, RNG is on your side, which it's probably not. But if you were, if you're a gambling man and you want to gamble with your time, this might be the spot for you, but it is not the spot for me. This place sucks. I hate it. Moving on to something with a little bit more consistency, Swamp Fogan Habitat. This is a pretty good spot. Um, as you can see, 462 million silver as the average trash per hour or not trash but money per hour and this is with a blue loot scroll this only drives my point home about about star's end is why would you ever go there when you can go to this spot and it takes the same ap to grind it like they're both 260 ap areas and this place is just far it's just just far better in money it is so much better not to mention you get to grind for the um you know shards of the furious knight or drain knight or whatever the hell this is called i forgot what the hell this is even called but these shards essentially are used to make the uh extra accessories that you can use to make like um these uh cloud crescent rings or starlet rings like the, these the, these accessories you need the shards from this spot in order to make them so and on the console currently they are sold out on the market so they sell for about two bill a pop if you get you know every hundred of these so you need a hundred red shards a hundred blue shards and you can sell one of the uh, cups on the marketplace for two bill and again that's every what like 10 20 hours give or take depending on your rng so pretty good it's, it's solid money in general from trash loot and also everything else here it's just overall a, a pretty good spot and plus nobody grinds here it's always empty this is a sleeper spot for sure to kind of talk about group grinding real quick castle ruins is pretty nice uh i like to grind this when i have like a three-man friend group that's just looking to kind of play the game together this is a really solid money spot if you're looking to grind here we're talking you're you're making upwards of 500 mil an hour if you have a really cracked group you can push this average trash loot to about 18k which is kind of like again you, you need a little bit of gear and master the rotation but it's really, really solid money. And if you have a friend group or, you know, you have guildies that want to run it on a regular basis, this can be some serious, consistent money for you and your friends. And you all can make gains kind of together and gradually work towards gear as a group. And that's good for keeping your, you know, your friend group engaged in the game and kind of progressing together. So that's it's, it's really nice. Castle Ruins is a good change for the game for having more group grind spots. As an honorable mention, Alter Imp Habitat is the blue uh, shard grind zone for group grinding it's only a two-man grind zone whereas castle ruins is a three-man but this is still worth mentioning if you play bdo with like a buddy your best friend whatever or if you have just again you know a, a group of guildies that rotate and you just you know play with whoever and whoever's on 
this can be a really nice group grind spot where you guys are just talking chilling listening to music and hanging out together and you know you get lost in the ground for a couple hours and the next thing you know oh man i made like you know a bill in two hours that's pretty good okay graduating to some serious money spots now Sucraya Abyssal Ruins is essentially like, like the BDO staple like you are working towards this grind spot because the money here is based on the red shards and tongue grad rings you're going to be wanting grabbing at least two of these an hour if you can you know get lucky enough for that type of RNG but even if you don't the trash loot is not that bad close to 200 mil an hour give or take given you know how good you are at pulling and you know managing your trash um 8.9k trash is a bit excessive for what i would consider console's average gear score that comes here i don't think that you're going to be able to pull this i'd say a more realistic number is probably around 7.1k trash an hour for like lower gear score if you're like hard capped or close to like 290 plus kudum black star you could probably pull this number and even higher but for the most part if you're just like start starting to get towards the end game at like 281 like let's say your gear looks something like this you could probably pull about 8k an hour 8.9 is a bit pushing honestly but you could probably do like 7.58k for sure with about this gear score right here at 287 285 kudum black stars so it, it's doable it's just a bit it's probably a little bit more sweatier with mastering the rotation and knowing what you're doing with this character and the, the rotation and whatnot but overall the money comes from the red shards and the tongrad rings and the kafras obviously moving towards the end here i want to talk about another group grind spot that's really really good because you need to grind here anyway for the the uh, flame of despair which is used to make fallen god uh, you need a hundred embers to make one flame, or you could just get the raw flame drop of grinding Tunkata, which is Turos. And th this is super important for Fallen God because it's going to be a staple for your gear and how to actually increase gear score. So as you can see, when you get to Fallen God, right, it comes at a base. You get to pry three DP. You get to duo another three DP. So on and so forth, extending all the way to you know pen, but duo is kind of the cutoff point because when you reach duo fallen god it's basically a c20 dim tree and that's what you're aiming for so when you're grinding turos here this spot is really good for kafras really good for the flames because obviously it's the only place that really drops it and the turo spelts are kind of whatever you don't really care too much about these but if you do get one it's about 200 mil um every time you do get a turo spelt this number once once again is incorrect on console they sell for about 210 million silver so it's a lot more money on console currently the one thing that i will say that i'm super disappointed in currently is that we do not have venomous night fangs these do not exist on console for whatever reason and i don't know when they plan to implement these um you know things but this is a decent chunk of your money too and unfortunately they just don't exist on console so you'll just have to take that into consideration but outside of that you can still make easily 400 500 mil an hour and you're looking at about 50 plus kafras every hour as well which is pretty nice and then kind of getting towards the top end of solo grinding orc camp is sort of the end game result here this is what you are working towards once you can grind here at a decent level where you you can pull I probably I want to say about 17.5 to 18.5k trash. I'd say that's about the uh, average for a yellow loot scroll on console. The only way you're pushing 20k plus is if you have a lot of gear. Got to remember on console we have less frame rate. We have just a ton of like DPS issues and lag and things that just cause us to lose money per hour. So 20k is very unrealistic for most players. So you kind of have to set your expectations. If I had to guess and suggest something, about 17k is what you should push for, which I think is totally fine in the average for console. 20k plus is again you're like hard capped and you're playing a meta class that can you know super push the trash loot up there but overall 17k you're easily making about 450 to 500 mil an hour and that's that's totally solid and if you're doing that you're looking real good and as the highest level of grinding if you are interested in this olin's valley is a three-man grind spot which is incredible for kafras you're looking at 70 plus an hour plus a ton of ancient dust not to mention um, the the trash loot here is just super juiced, right? I mean, these things are selling for a hundred seven thousand, and let's be realistic, right? Uh, the trash loot here is kind of whatever. The major amounts of money is the armor, the weapon stones. I mean, shit. Like, look at these. 
Blackstone Armor, 39 mil a pop. But like these are sold out on console, by, by the way. Like, like they're, they're sold out. Like they're selling for 210K a pop and you're getting 224 easily. 70 Cafras, 111 Ancient Dust. Olucuses are selling for about 115 mil. And then not to even consider, right? that um you, you could very easily get like the the lung drop for your orzeka outfit or the pity pieces to get the orzeka outfit and just in general you're just making a, a ridiculous amount of money here the average trash for console i would say is about 2.5k with a decent group and for like a mid-tier kind of like eh, group you're looking at like maybe 2k an hour which is not the greatest but you can make it work and oddly enough you don't need a lot of gear to grind here you, you could grind here at like 660 gear score is it efficient and is it effective and do i recommend it not necessarily especially if your composition is not good you're definitely going to want to grind here with a shot if you're looking to make the most efficient amount of money per hour but without a shy it can be pretty rough and you're also going to want to run a, an elixir rotation just to make sure you don't die this is definitely a sweaty grind spot you are not going to be grinding comfortably here if you are not on a class that allows you to be comfortable for sure like striker um zerker or shy eva mystics things like that that make this place really really just super simple to grind that's going to be like the main thing that you're looking for when it comes to Olin's. But like if you're playing like, let's say, I don't know, like a Kuno or something, you're not going to have a lot of fun here. But yeah, that's pretty much kind of the end result here. I'm going to put some honorable mentions on the screen because I don't want to make this video longer than it, you know, it already is. We're looking at 25 minutes or less or or something around that time now but yeah these are some honorable mentions i didn't get to talk about all of them this would be like an hour-long video if i got to talk about every grind spot i wanted to but just if you're not fucking with the spots that i suggested in this video check out these honorable mentions on screen and you can try them out for yourself they're all really solid and i co-signed most of them so highly recommend just checking them all out if you really want to just do some research yourself but anyway that's it for today's video that's it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed it i'll talk to you guys later Bye bye